Hello, welcome back. The title of this lesson is called Using Parentheses. This is part one. You might think parentheses, that's something we learn when we write down sentences in English class or in language class. But actually we use parentheses in math all the time. But the first time you see a set of parentheses in math, it looks a little weird and it scares some students. So we're going to put that to bed here. At the end of the lesson, you'll understand what parentheses are for and how to use them in math. So here the road map is we're going to learn how to use parentheses and then in the future lessons we're going to learn about something called the order of operations. So we're starting that process here but that's the place that we're going. So what we want to do is talk about how do you handle it when for instance I give you a math uh, expression that looks like this. A parentheses is opened up and you have 2 plus 1 on the inside of the parentheses. Why do we have these parentheses anyway? Let me tell you the, the, uh, the final answer of the whole thing right here. This is what I want you to remember. Anytime you see parentheses in math, it just means you do what's inside the parentheses first. Now in this case, the only thing we have is 2 plus 1 on the inside of the parentheses, so it's real simple. But as we get larger and larger and larger things added together or other things that we're doing, we have to look at the parentheses first and do it first. So the only reason we ever use parentheses is when we want to do what's inside of those first. I want you to remember that because that's going to be very important. So what we have on the inside of these parentheses is what? 2 plus 1. Of course that's 3. And so once you have just a single item on the inside of the parentheses, you can just drop the parentheses at this point because they don't serve any purpose. We've already done the addition. And so the answer to this problem is 3. Now you might look at this and say, well that was so easy. Why are we wasting our time doing things like this? It's because when we have other things other than the parentheses, then we need to know how to do the math in the proper order. Right? That's called the order of operations, and that's what we're starting with here. Let's say we have another problem. This one is parentheses 1 plus 3, close parentheses, plus 2. Now all you need to know as a student is that when you see a set of parentheses, it just means do it first. I want you to say it 10 times. Parentheses, do it first. Parentheses, do it first. Parentheses, do it first. There's no exceptions. You always do what's inside the parentheses first. So we ignore this plus 2. It doesn't have any, anything to do with anything. Some people will try to add 2 plus 3. You don't do it that way. You only look inside of the parentheses and do it first. Now we have, what do we have here? 1 plus 3, right? 1 plus 3 is 4. And of course I'm going to wrap the parentheses, but we could drop them at this point. And now we have on the outside plus 2. Now we could uh, uh, mentally just drop the parentheses. They don't serve any purpose anymore. Now we do 4 plus 2. 4 plus 2 is what? 6. And so the answer is 6. All right, let's move along and see some more examples of this and you'll understand a little more clearly how to, how to approach it. Let's say for the next problem, parentheses, 2 plus 2, right? And then on the outside, uh, we want to multiply by 3. So here's a big dot. Dot means multiply 3. You could put an x for multiply, but we're trying to get away from using x's for multiplying because you know, we already use x and y a lot in math, so we don't want to get confused. We don't want to think it's a, an x variable. We want to remember that this is multiply. So what do we do? Always the same thing every time. Go in the parentheses, do it first. 2 plus 2 is what? 4. All right, so you have a 4 inside of there, but we still have to multiply by 3. Now mentally we can drop the parentheses here because we've already used them to serve our purpose. 4 times 3 is 12. And that is the correct answer. Now some students, if you don't know what you're doing here, will start doing things like 2 times 3 is 6, right? Uh, and then 6 plus 2 is 8. And so you'll get the wrong answer because obviously the answer is not 8, the answer is 12. If you put this into a calculator or into a computer, the answer you'll get is 12. And if you do it in the wrong order, 2 times 3 is 6 and 6 plus 2 is 8, then you will get the wrong answer. So that is why we have to understand that parentheses force us to do what is inside of those parentheses first. That is the only thing they're for, and that's why we have an entire lesson set up just to talk about parentheses. Next example, let's say we have 3 times 1, remember dot means multiply, on the inside of parentheses, and then we're going to add to that a 2. All right? We do not do the 1 plus 2 to give me a 3. We don't do that first. We have to do what is inside of the parentheses first. So we only focus on that. What do we have inside the parentheses? 3 times 1 is 3. And then we still have to add that 2. This comes last. And the parentheses we can now drop uh, because we've used them. 3 plus 2 is, of course, 5. The answer is 5. 
All right, next problem. Let's say we have parentheses 25 plus two, and then we minus three. Now you see what I mean? It forces us to do what is inside of here first. If you don't do that, if you do two minus three first, that is totally the wrong way to go. We have to do what is inside of the parentheses first. What is 25 plus two? 25 plus two is 27. Now you can put parentheses around if you want, but once you do the addition, then we can kind of drop the parentheses as we have been mentally doing up here. So we have 27, we still have to subtract the three. So we can go down 26, 25, 24, and we'll arrive at an answer of 24, and that is the final answer. If you do it in the wrong order, if you don't do what's inside of this thing first, it is completely wrong. And that's why we're spending time to get you familiar with that. In fact, that's why we have the parentheses anyway, to make sure we do this first. All right, next problem. Let's say we have two times, I'll put a parentheses two times four. All right, now the first thing I'm gonna to talk to you about is we know we're gonna do what's inside of here first. All right, but the dot out here, see how it's two times and then a parentheses, you really don't have to put that dot there. You could write it right next door to the parentheses. And it means the same thing. When you have a number or a letter right next to a parentheses, even though there's no dot here, it still means multiply. I'm just showing you that you can go either, you can look at it either way. These two things are exactly the same thing. So what do we have here? Well, we're, we know we must do what is inside of the parentheses first. We have to. So this two with a multiplication out here, I'll put a two dot, even though we don't see a dot here, I'll put a dot there. Uh, we're multiplying by, we have to do what's inside of here first. Two times four is eight. After we do that now, two times eight, we can drop the parentheses mentally, is 16. And so the answer is 16. All right. Uh, again, when you have a number or a letter right next to parentheses, it means the same thing as multiply. So had putting the dot or not putting the dot, it, it's, it's, it's fine either way. All right. Let's take a look at the problem. Three plus parentheses, nine minus seven. Again, all you have to remember, do what's inside the parentheses first. That means the three plus, I can't even do it yet. I have to do what is inside of the parentheses. Nine minus seven is what? Nine minus seven is two. And now I have three plus two, which is five. And so the answer is five. That's the final answer. So we always do what is inside of these parentheses first. All right? Next problem, only a few more problems. What about five plus six times three. Again, five plus six times three. Now, you have to do what's inside the parentheses first. That means the five plus, I can't even do it yet. I have to do what's inside of here first. Six times three is 18. And now that I've done that, the parentheses kind of disappear. They don't matter anymore. Five plus 18 just go up. 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. 23. So the answer is 23. If you ignore these parentheses and just go out of order, then five plus six, what is five plus six? That's what? 11, right? And then if you take that 11 times three, that's 33. That's completely wrong. So if you don't do it in the right order, you will get the wrong answer. Always do the parentheses first. We do the addition last because that's not inside the parentheses. All right, only two more problems. These are a little bit tougher. Let's take a look at this. One plus, now check this out, two times five. Now we have a closed parentheses here, and now because of this open one, we have another closed parentheses there, and then we have plus six. Now, this looks very complicated, but it's not complicated. What you need to remember is we always do what's inside the parentheses first. If you have two sets of parentheses, like one inside of the other, then you must go to the innermost one first. Uh, and, and, you, and you, you deal with that one, and then you go a little bit outward from there. So if you ever see more than one set of parentheses nested inside of each other, go to the innermost one first. That's what we have to do. So we have a set of parentheses here, so we're gonna do what's inside of here first, but notice what do we have in here? We have a one plus this. We have another set of parentheses, so then we must go to the innermost first. So what we're going to have is one plus, what is two times five? That's the one we do first, 10. This outer set of parentheses, it's still here. See, all I did is I went to the innermost one and made it, did the 10. Everything else is exactly the same as it was before. But now this inner 10, these inner parentheses, they kind of disappear and I need to do work on the slightly outer parentheses. 
1 plus 10 is what? 11. But then I still have a 6. So in other words, I did the innermost parentheses first, then I did the slightly most outer parentheses, 10 plus 1 being 11. I drop the parentheses at that point because they don't matter anymore. Plus 6. What is 11 plus 6? What do you get? 17. And that's the final answer. 11 plus 6 is 17. So when you see multiple sets of parentheses, go to the innermost first. Here's our last problem. What if we have 25 minus, open two sets of parentheses, 8 plus 2, close one set, multiply by 2, and close the other set. You see, these parentheses go together, and then these parentheses go together. So I have two nested sets of parentheses. So of course I have to do what's inside of here first, but what is inside of here is yet another set of parentheses. So I have to go and do these first. The 8 plus 2 is the first thing that I'm actually going to do. The 8 plus 2 is 10. I still have the times 2 here. I still have these parentheses there, and I still have the 25. Notice all I did was did this first. 8, time, 8 plus 2 is 10. But now I have this set of parentheses to deal with, because you always do parentheses first. 10 uh, times 2 is what? 20. So I have that 25 there minus 20. I did this next. And then finally, what is 25 minus 20? Simply 5. That's the final answer. So when you have multiple sets of parentheses, go to the innermost one. We did that first. The uh, 8 plus 2 is 10. I still have to multiply by the 2. That's inside of parentheses, so I do it next. Finally, after all the parentheses are gone, then I just go left to right, subtracting the numbers, and then I have an answer for a 5. So here we have an entire lesson just getting you comfortable with parentheses, because I know that the first time you see parentheses in math, it looks re weird and crazy. But it's not weird and crazy. All you do is do what's inside of them first. That, that is it. That's all they are for. And as we learn how to deal with parentheses, when we get to order of operations a little more complex later, then we will uh, understand and be very comfortable with these guys. So solve all of these yourself. When you're comfortable, go on to part two. We'll get more practice with parentheses in math.